AWS S3 Simple Storage Service. If you know what S3 is, there is a lot more that you need to know. And if you don't know S3, you have come to the right place. This is another session in our exciting AWS series and in this video, we'll be discussing about AWS S3. So for new folks, what is S3? It's a simple storage service, just like any other Google Drive, Dropbox, but slightly with different features as every cloud provider provides some or the other service for storage. Like in GCP, Google Cloud Platform, we have Google Cloud Storage. And in Microsoft Azure, we have Blob Storage. Similarly, in AWS, we have S3. As simple as that for new folks. And second basic point, how does it look like? Well, you cannot see the hardware, but from the UI perspective, it looks something like this. Where you can view your files, upload your files, and download your files, delete them just like any other cloud storage service. Now, if this was all that you knew, there are four very important points. And yes, they are very important to understand before you say that you know AWS S3. So let's begin with those four important points. First two were very basic points. Now comes the critical and most important ones. So point number three, versioning. Did you know that you can maintain different versions of your objects in AWS S3 and recover any version of that at any later point of time? Let's see how. I have logged into my GKC admin account. All of these account creation was already done in our last session. If you have not watched them, just go in the i button and watch all those sessions. Now, this is about S3. First and foremost, let's create a S3 bucket. Go to the search bar and search for S3 and click on create bucket. Now, important thing to note here that this bucket name has to be globally unique. You can see here bucket name must be unique within global namespace. That means not only in my account or in my region, but overall in any account any XYZ account over the AWS, it should be unique. So let me give a name, prod bucket, okay? Then we have to select the region. Although, just keep in mind, while creating any of the resource, on the right top hand, you will see in which region it is. And this is very different about S3. Usually, whatever resource you are creating or in whatever region that is being created, you will see that particular region. And if any service is not region based, it's a global service, it's not attached to a region, you will see a global here. But only in case of S3, you will see global, but every bucket is attached to a particular region. So don't get confused that uh, if you see global here, so buckets are global, they are not attached to any region, don't get confused with that. Buckets are attached to some region. So I'm in India, I'll keep this uh, AP South one that is Mumbai selected. We don't have any existing bucket i'll leave it as it is we don't want to attach any acl and for now i will leave it block all public access we'll discuss how uh, this works basically how our objects can be accessed through uh, different endpoints we'll come to that but as of now i'll block all public access and here let's enable the versioning make sure you do that to see actual benefits of versioning i'll leave the tags blank for now Encryption as well. I'll just use the standard one and in advanced setting. I'll leave as it is Just click on create bucket So our GK code last prod bucket is successfully created now Let's go inside this and as I told the interface is very similar to any other cloud storage service Let's get some hands-on and upload few objects. I'll click on upload Add files and I have three images of different cars. I'll upload the Audi one and click on upload so here it is uploaded. Close. Now you can see I have one image of an Audi. You can click here and just click on open and you can see the image is opened. Now it's only open because in the same browser I'm already logged in with my AWS account and I am the owner of this. And this has already authenticated with a security token that I can open this. This is not publicly accessible. If you remember, we haven't checked the publicly accessible option. All those things can be done using the bucket policies, but that is not the scope of this video. We'll discuss about the versioning. Now, to see the versions, you can see an option here, show versions. If I toggle this on, you can see right now, I have only one version of it and with a version ID. Now, let me replace this image by any other image of Audi. Let's see, I have this image of an Audi again. I have renamed it. This is also an Audi. I have renamed it with the same name. Let me upload again. Add files. This time I'll go to my wallpapers folder and this Audi I'll upload. Okay, so this is uploaded. Now you can see 648. This is just now updated. And if I click here, open, I have my new Audi. But if you 
toggle the show versions now you can see this is my latest audio image and then i have a version of it that was uploaded three minutes back now to get it back get the old image back what i just have to do is i can delete the actual version click on delete type permanently delete and delete objects close now you can see only one version and if i click here open my old audio is back so that's how we can maintain versions also in case you have accidentally deleted let me give you another example let's upload another file add files and let's upload a mercedes now upload now again see the versions only one because version for this we have already deleted and this doesn't have any version this is a mercedes now let's delete this and imagine this is being accidentally deleted delete type delete here delete objects okay now you can see mercedes is deleted but closely watch once we switch on the show versions see mercedes is still there this is deleted with a delete marker and older version which was actually existing which we deleted that is the actual jpeg to restore that back what we have to do is delete marker which is existing we have to delete the delete marker click here delete and permanently delete delete objects close and our mercedes is back open boom so that's how versioning can help you in recovering from accidental deletes or overrides point number four replication did you know that you can automatically set up replication from one bucket to another bucket be it in same region or uh, across the region you might want to do that for various number of reasons let's say you have a prod environment and you need a continuous replication for disaster recovery environment and you need not do operations on two different buckets but automatically once you put the object in one of the bucket it should automatically replicate to a different bucket maybe in some different region altogether or the requirement may be for simple archival or whatever for that matter but you can set up the replication and as i told this replication can be done across different regions as well so no limitations there let's see how do we do that now to see the replication let me create another bucket in some different region so same thing is applicable in same region as well as the other region let me create for uh, testing let me create one for another region on which we will be replicating our objects let's name it gk code labs dr bucket dr means disaster recovery let's say we are uh, creating a bucket in case anything goes wrong in our prod bucket this should be a dr bucket and let's assign it a region us east one north virginia again rest of the setting remain same make sure you switch on the versioning on the target bucket as well versioning needs to be enabled make a note of it more versioning needs to be enabled for replication and rest of the setting as it is create bucket and we have our dr bucket in us east one again as i told on the top right you can see a global setting but that only means you will see the s3 buckets in all the regions in one view itself it's not like buckets are global now let's start testing the replication for that let me go to my source bucket prod bucket and go on management come down see replication rules as of now zero we have to create a replication rule here give any name see prod dr replication we we'll leave it as enabled obviously we have to enable this replication rule now we can apply some filters in case we want to replicate only some set of uh, files with the wildcards like only the pdf files only the jpg files or any extension for that matter i'll apply to all objects now here again choose bucket in this account specify a bucket in another account you can also replicate any bucket which lies in any other aws account and that is the reason our bucket name should be unique across all aws i'll leave it in this account enter the bucket name or we can browse s3 and let's select the dr from prod we'll be replicating to dr choose path okay it has already detected the region for that and as soon as it detects you can see here this is a cross region replication because our target bucket is in another region now i can select the default iam role for now but if you have already set up some role which specifically handles the s3 uh, operations you can select that 
if you don't know what are roles please go watch the previous session in which i have explained what are roles right now we don't have uh, any specific one created i'll select create new role if you already have any role which handles the uh, s3 operations if you are not clear what are roles please go watch my previous session in which i have explained about roles and i don't want to encrypt let's leave all the options as it is and save now here you see a prompt as we already have few objects in our s3 bucket it's asking do we want to replicate the existing objects as well or any object that is uploaded from now on important thing to note here is if you do not replicate existing object still you can uh, replicate them later but for that you have to run s3 batch replication job but right now itself it's giving you the option that if you want to replicate it can run that job right away for now just to uh, explain i'll select the uh, do not replicate existing object option and submit okay so here our replication rule you can see the destination bucket is this let me see we open and you can see zero objects although in our source bucket we have two uh, objects because the existing objects are not replicated that's why here you can see in the dr bucket nothing is being uh, present right now now let's test from now on if we upload anything add files let's upload the bmw now upload close three files here in the prod let's go to dr and refresh it might take some time because it's a cross-region replication refresh and there you go it took around 25 to 30 seconds and in our dr bucket we got the bmw another important point in replication replication doesn't provide you any benefit in case of chain replication so if you have set any replication from dr to any other bucket the objects that are replicated to this from any other bucket let's say prod those will not be replicated to the third bucket also another important thing the deletes are not replicated so if i go here and delete this bmw delete close this is deleted but still this won't be deleted here that is done by default from aws because the core purpose of replication is to uh, be safe from any accidental deletes so if we replicate the delete action as well our core purpose of replication might not be so yes but the versions are replicated point number five storage classes the s3 seems to be only one service but the storage can be chosen depending on the availability of our objects that we want the number of time we want to request those objects, number of time we want to access or retrieve those objects, how fast do we want the re response to be. And for some objects, let's say, if th we they are hardly to be accessed uh, in near time, do we really want to pay for that faster storage? So service is same, that is for storage, but the storage class on which the objects are being stored, there are lot many options for that. And these all options are known as storage classes. Let's see a brief intro about that. So to see any storage class for any object, you can click on that particular object and scroll down here. You can see the storage class right now. It's standard. There is a whole table provided to you in AWS S3 documentation on all the storage classes. S3 standard, intelligent tiering, IA, that is infrequent access, IA plus, Glacier, and deep archive so based upon their availability durability sla storage charges retrieval charges they are defined on the um, on different uh, sort of storage classes you can anytime change your storage class you can go here top right object actions edit storage class and from here you can select any one that you want it also gives you the explanation what it is designed for what will be the same table that you saw in the documentation you can take a calculated decision how you want your objects to be you can also uh, on the time based duration you can transition your objects to different storage classes let's say you want some after 30 days you don't want it to be standard you want it to be intelligent tiering or infrequent access you can do that in lifecycle rules that will be our next topic in this video but overall you can go through all these storage classes if you don't have an account go to the documentation and read about this because this will be different for every use case so it has to be everyone's uh, unique calculated decision point number six life cycle rules a very common use case in most of the cloud projects that we don't need data in this particular directory for let's say after uh, seven or ten days let let's say it's a temporary directory and whatever data that we are writing we know that even at least after seven days it's it, it should no longer be needed how do we set up automatic cleanup or let's say uh, we are writing our uh, any, any computing job spark job is writing to s3 and the history data 
is being written to any particular folder and we know uh, after let's say keep a buffer of uh, one week before that eighth day ninth day tenth day those data will not be that frequently accessed so why pay for uh, such a fast storage can we do something after seven days the storage class for that can change and we can save some amount on the storage classes important use case right so we can achieve all of this by setting up life cycle rules let's see how do we do that once you are in any bucket go on management and under replication rule we already have one you can see here life cycle rules as of now no rules are set up create a life cycle rule and name it something let's say prod gk code labs prod lc rule one again you have the option for using one or more filters i'll do that for all objects and here it gives you some warning because life cycle rules are very harsh you can see move current version of object between storage classes or expire current version permanently delete non-current versions delete expired objects or incomplete multi-part uploads so it's almost on changing the storage classes or deleting or expiring some objects so that's why in s3 uh, aws already understands that we'll have a variety of objects some will be more important some will be very important some will not be that much of importance so it's better to limit the scope that's why it's giving the warning if you want to limit the scope go here and type your prefix what is your prefix if you go to any bucket and any object click on this so if you see this is the url in aws s3 conventions this looks like this is the bucket and inside that we have a file even inside that if i create a folder let's say cars slash bmw for example i have a folder cars here and even inside that i have german cars here so in a bucket for example i'm not creating that because it's a, a simple example so just imagine we have created two folders inside a bucket now in aws convention this is known as a bucket name and this entire thing is known as the key for this object for this image bmw.jpg slash cars german or cars slash german slash bmw jpg is the key for this object so make sure it looks like folders but it is known as the key for this object and anything between your bucket name and your uh, actual file name this is known as the prefix so i hope the prefix and the object key is clear this highlighted one is the prefix and this is your object key so that is what it is asking if you go here the bucket we were setting up here so it was asking about the prefix so that we can define in uh, any particular uh, folder where we have the important ones or we want to um, expire or change the uh, storage classes which prefix we want uh, inside let's say i have a temp folder inside that i want to do some action expire delete or anything so i can provide this limit scope and the temp prefix but for now I'll go to apply all objects, I acknowledge and we have different options. Delete expired object or incomplete multi-part uploads or delete non-current versions. Let's for now select the non-current version. You can enter the number of days, let's say 10 and you can set up number of newer versions to retain as well. These options will be uh, based upon the uh, options you select here. If I select move current versions between storage classes, you can see I have different set of options. So move it to infrequent access after let's say seven days, I can add the transition as well. So then move it to intelligent tiering after let's say 10 days. So similarly, we can uh, add a flow and it can transition its storage classes as we go ahead in the time so this way you can create the rule there is no point creating right now because uh, i'm not going to wait for seven days to uh, demo this but this is how you can set up life cycle rules so these were few very important use cases in aws s3 where you learned some of the s3 basics versioning replication storage classes and life cycle rules 
So if you like this session and other videos in AWS series, please hit that like button and please subscribe to GK Code Labs for more videos like this. Thank you guys. See you later.